do structure. So we have here, if we're looking at the structure, we have a number one, there is a, this is a subject, but really it's the object. And I'll explain what I mean in a second. So you have a, you have a U, who is the U? This is the, this would be a, an object person. And so we'll look in the context because it's not identified. So if we were just preaching a specific text, we'd want to take a look back at the preceding context to identify this. And then we have, we have a conjunction here, un, therefore. And so whenever you see a therefore, right? Whenever you see a therefore, we have to look back what's going on in the preceding context. So when you have a therefore, looking back, we're looking at we're looking at cause. Looking back, we're looking at, so when we're looking this way, we're looking at cause, or we could say foundation. When we look forward, we, we can think of inference or conclusion. Okay, I hope that's making sense. So we're gonna look at the, at the broader preceding context. So we're looking at the broader preceding context. So we're looking right now at, at cause or foundation because we're looking back. It, it's only an issue of direction, okay? If you look backwards, you're looking at a foundation. If you look forward, you're looking at the inference. So what I'm trying to get at is uh, is Second Timothy 2, 1 and 2 is an inference because of something else that was said. So we have to look at the, the background context, okay? In, a, in another place here, hold on. So we're looking at Second Timothy 2, 1. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight some things as, as we work through here. So just to be clear what's going on here so we're looking right now at the we're looking right now at the background context to set up what we have in this passage and so we'll be looking at who is the you who is the so right now we're, we're asking this question who the you is and we're also seeking to identify the speaker we're looking this to identify the speaker or the actor the actor here is clearly the actor here is clearly Paul, no doubt. The object is Timothy. And then we have, let's, let's, do the, the foundation, we can write down the foundation here. Number one, Timothy's testimony. Number two, the gospel. Number three, apostates. And we're saying falling away. So these are these are these are huge. This is huge for what is to follow, especially then if we're thinking about the the, the context being this context being number one, the church, number two, leadership in the church, and number three, missions. Right. So the Asia, the Asia context. So this is this is missions, right? So beyond Jerusalem, beyond Palestine. All right, so let's so let's get in here. So you have you have Timothy is referenced you therefore, and then there is this description here. Paul describes Timothy, my child. So this is a description of Timothy, and so here we see in this relationship one of intimacy, relationship, three accountability. And we're going to see that in a moment. So really, the 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 context of Paul raising up Timothy is in this idea of of intimacy. He views him as his child. And number two, there is there is a very close relationship. So so maybe we want to flip these. Maybe we'd want to say there's a relationship, and what kind of what's the extent, the quality of the relationship? It's a a intimate familial bond. But in that bond, there's also this accountability aspect, and we're gonna we're gonna look at that a little bit later. This really sets up the context. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, I just want to work through this text. We're gonna do a, a structural breakdown, and then we're gonna do a significances. Okay, so let's let's first just do a structural breakdown. We really have the context set up for what is to follow. Okay, so. Let what we'll do here is I'm going to bring up the Greek text parallel. Let's see if I can do that here, so that we can see the parallels. Okay, so we can so if, so if you can track here, 
we 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 can we can follow the we can follow the the tags if that makes sense. So we're so you have at the bottom here. So you can see, just so that we're nice and and clear, on the left we have the Greek. You should be able to see that if it's a little bit dark, or it's blurry. Watch it on 4K, but you should be able to see that. So you have the Greek to the left. It it tracks on the right here. And then we also have, when we look at it at the bottom, we can see the actual, the breakdown of that word. So, so let's move on here. So we have endunamu, endunamu. And so this is, of course, the, the word is from dunamai, or we have to be strong or strengthened. So the, the specific type is, it could either be a present middle or present passive. It's just the context that depends how we are to understand that. So I have be strengthened here. And so I think the context that we're going to see, especially with the with prepositional phrases, that we could not understand this as a, a present middle imperative or a command, meaning to say that Timothy is doing this himself. Rather, it's a passive command that that is being that he is allowing to be done to him so so this type here is a this is a this is this verb is a command and it's a and it's a passive and we're only going to highlight that because we're going to explain when we come back to significance here so this is this this is a command and it's passive all right, and so we'll come back. So then, after we see that that's that's the that's that's a fundamental command. So therefore, you Timothy, be strengthened. All right, and then we have uh, we have one prepositional phrase and then a descriptive phrase. So n te cariti, in the grace. So this is the if we look up this n, there's a range of meaning there, and so we really want to see this. Uh, we could say in, or if you want it, if you want to use a different word, we could say with. And this this would be describing means. This is describing means here, and so be strengthened. How? In the grace, okay. And so Timothy can't be doing this to himself. He needs to allow it to be done upon him. Uh, and so we'll look at uh, different ways that he that he can do that. And later, and then we have here, what kind of grace? Where is this grace coming from? What's the relationship of this grace? We have a descriptive description of the grace. That description is, is here, which the one which is in Christ Jesus, that which is in Christ Jesus. Okay. And so, and so the, the in Christ Jesus, this would be a, a sphere. So this would be a sphere or realm. And we're going to unpack this later, but really, so when we talk about the sphere realm of Christ, this has to be referring to fundamentally what theologians refer to as union, union with Christ. And we'll unpack that in a moment, okay, when we come back to look at significances. Union with Christ. All right. So we have this this command to be strengthened in the grace. What kind of grace? What's the relationship? Which grace? Whose grace? The grace that is that is in Christ Jesus. Or which so we could to add to add a clarification for clarity purposes, we could say which comes, or we could say the one which it which is so which is which comes in Christ Jesus which is in Christ Jesus so this is really accenting a very particular type of of activity that's going on okay so one other note here just coming back here so this is a, a passive this is also this is also present Moving along here, so then we have a we have a a connecting word chi. We have a chi. This is a a conjunction, and so this is a this is a connecting word. So number one, Timothy is to be strengthened in the grace 
which is in Christ Jesus in view of the gospel, in view of his testimony, in view of apostates, in a church leadership missions context, just to remember. And so the connecting word is not only to be strengthened, and there is a, an, this is kind of strange. Paul begins with a description, which really accents the description. So this puts the description forward here. So this is really a description, a descriptive phrase. And we can know that because of this connection, what? So the what is going to connect. There we go. Okay, so this should be, this should, so this is a description, a, a lengthy description phrase. And we're going to see that it's connected to here. And we'll explain why in a moment. Okay, so this is a descriptive phrase. But within the specific phrase, we have subjects, actors, and objects. And so the specific subject is, although it's coming through as a from me, as a source, this is really the, the actor, the one who is doing the speech. Okay. So this is the actor. This is Paul. So Paul is speaking. Timothy is hearing something. Okay. So working the opposite way he's 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 hearing so we could see it two ways you could see you could see paul as the source if we're focusing upon what you've heard from me yeah the, it depends on, on where the focus is the object is those things that that have been heard okay and so this is the action and and so we can unpack that Maybe you'd want to flip it around to see Paul as the source and Timothy is the the subject in that or the actor that's hearing. But if we're thinking about reception, receiving something, it's coming from Paul. Okay, maybe that's a little confusing. I, I hope I hope we're understanding where it's coming from. Paul, Paul is the one speaking. Timothy is the one hearing. Okay, and then the means. There's a means here. Just so that there isn't confusion, because I could see how that would be. Let's just leave it here as, let's change this to source, just so that it's not as confusing. So recognizing that Paul is the speaker, though. So this is the source. All right, this is the source. And then we have Timothy is receiving something. So, so, so Timothy is the 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 actor in the sense that he's hearing. And then we have the means there. So if if we can think about here, this, this verb, what you have heard, this is the, we could say, the content, he's heard it from Paul. And this is really important. This, this through many witnesses, what, what, what is the significance there? What is this idea of of witnesses that's going on here. So we want to think about here, we'll come back to this. Let's think about imagery. What is the imagery of, of witnesses? And then coming down here, we have the, the, so this is a description. So it's a lengthy description. And so this is being, if we can structurally speaking, this is being accented. That's being accented. That's being placed in front, and that's not typical. Typically, that would be what follows. If you, you would you would front it in order to accent, okay. And so then, the main uh, the the main clause we have down here. In trust, it, this is the this is the action. Actually, it's not the action. This is the command. So now we have two commands: the object that is to be received, that is to be entrusted, is this, these things, object, concept, or content, or I guess truths. Maybe we we'll want to stick with truths. This is a plurality of ideas here. So I'm just, tr we're trying to use some type of word to quantify what, what's being entrusted. Okay. So Let's we'll discuss that later. 
All right, and then the the object people is are men. They are men. So this is the object people. And then there's two further descriptions and clarifications. So so who are these men? Description number one is they are faithful. And then description number two they are able, they will be able also to, to others to teach. So this is description number two. And so specific, specifically, there is a specific ability that they have. Okay. And so if, if we're making connections here, so this is a description coming up here. This is a description coming up here. And so really we've structurally broken this down. And so we have here command number one, command number two. And this is a progression due to the chi. And so there's a queer progression or sequence here. So this, so this is, this is past action in that this must occur first. Okay. So, so this must occur first before you can do the second. All right. So even though there is a, a present idea here, this is, this is also a command and this is an aorist idea or not that it's a one time act in the past, but it's, it's a comprehensive entrusting. Okay. Um, or, or maybe we could say, uh, a one, one time entrusting. Okay. And that, and, and there's, there's eg exegetical linguistic, Greek linguistic, we could discuss that. But, but I think that's fair. And so several things I did forget to add here. I just want to add very briefly. Who are these men? These men are able. They have ability to do what? To teach others. So this is the, this would be an, would be an action. And then the object is the object of the action is is uh, is people other people okay so this is very significant for us to think about who is entrusted who is entrusted with these words it's a group of men not one these are faithful men and these have ability so I think that there's, I think that this is going to really start impacting. I think this will really impact how we understand equipping in missions in local church. Uh, this is a very powerful text here. Okay. And this is the philosophy and vision of Cloud Seminary Plus. We're going to come back and really unpack the significances in the next video. At least for here, you ha you see the structure and how we can prepare an exegetical outline. Yeah, this is this is good here. So let's go ahead. We're gonna take a uh, a five minute break, and then when we come back, we'll deal with significances, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to to really uh, unpack, discuss where the gospel is, and then also how to prepare an exegetical outline and how to preach it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a five minute break.